Yes. Uh, thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Hunters Hope, for um, inviting us to share our experience in Tennessee. Next slide, please. So this is where the magic happens for newborn screening. Um, this building actually was an old TB hospital that was converted to a laboratory. And a fun fact that I uh, found to be um, quite uh, interesting was that in 1986, when we moved into this building, we were only screening for two newborn, newborn disorders, and that was PKU and, and um, congenital hypothyroidism, excuse me. And so now we've really come a long way. Next slide, please. So the history of uh, lysosomal storage disorder screening in uh, Tennessee, um, this occurred in 2015. Incidentally, in 2015, Pompeii and NPS1 were added to the rest. And at the same time, there was a bill being introduced uh, into the legislature to be able to add uh, crab A and other lysosomal storage disorders to our panel. Uh, this particular um, uh, act came to be known as the Mabry Kate Webb Act. And who is Mabry Kate Webb? She was a little girl infant that uh, passed away in February of 2015 from crab A disease. And this particular act outlined uh, certain conditions that had to be met for disorders to be added to the Tennessee panel. And even though crab A was not uh, named in this um, particular uh, bill um, exactly, it outlined these conditions. Um, to include recommendations from our genetic advisory committee. They had a little bit more uh, responsibility or power for nominating conditions to be added to our panel, and then also the availability of a testing platform. So currently we're screening for all of the core disorders on the recommended uniform screening panel, and this includes um, other disorders that are not on that, on that recommend, recommended list, including crab A, Fabra, and Gaucher disease. Next slide, please. So we began screening for lysosomal uh, disease, um, lysosomal storage diseases, July 1 of 2017. And we're currently using um, the Perkin Elmer Neo LSD kit. Before then, we were using um, reagents that were manufactured by Perkin Elmer, but we switched over to the Neo LSD kit um, at the end of 2019. It is FDA approved and it's multiplex with other lysosomal storage disorders, including Neiman Pick. So it's an 18 hour incubation um, at 37 degrees um, Celsius. And most of our processing is done starting at 1 p.m. where we drop the enzyme. The following morning around 8 a.m. we quench and begin our analysis by tandem mass spectrometry. Um, results are normally reported by that following afternoon or the next day. And we calculate a daily median and any infant that flags less than a 10% below the daily median for gal enzyme is considered to be uh, preliminarily positive. We repeat that particular specimen in duplicate, and then we report the average. Our laboratory incidentally is open seven days a week. We run uh, LSD screening seven days a week, and that's to help facilitate a timely reporting for, for these disorders. Next slide, please. Here on this slide is our uh, reporting algorithm as well as our mailer comments for when a baby is uh, considered to be presumed positive. So where you see the green arrow, um, if we do have a positive flag, we'll repeat it times two. If that average is still less than 10% of the daily median, then it's reported to our follow-up team as abnormal. And then we also send a punch or several punches of that specimen to a reference laboratory for subsequent testing. Next slide, please. So the reference laboratory that we use is uh, Perkin Elmer. And here on the screen, you can see their cutoffs for what is considered to be abnormal for cycosine. So to answer um, a comment that Dr. Matern made regarding sequencing everything, we don't do that anymore. We discontinued that practice back in April of last year. So if the cycosine is above or equal to one and a half, one and a half nanometers, it is considered abnormal. And then that particular infant gets reflexed to 30 kb deletion and sequencing of the Gaussian gene. At the same time, we request that that infant be uh, recollected, have a specimen sent to us. Um, we repeat the enzyme screen, and this helps us to confirm what we initially saw as being a low Gaussian enzyme value, as well as that we have the right baby. Next slide, please. 
So just some statistics regarding what we've done so far. As I said week before, we began screening July 1 of 2017. So this is basically a four year period of time. We've screened over 345,000 infants. We've had uh, 44 infants to be considered presumed positive, meaning that they had a low Gaussian enzyme. We have only had two uh, possible late onset crab A disease uh, cases. There have been no confirmed infantile cases. We've had 25 pseudo deficiencies, uh, 15 false positives. And then there were two infants that were uh, pending a final um, closeout, so to speak, from our follow-up group, whether they were considered to be within normal limits or um, something else. So we're still waiting on that. And just a little bit of information regarding the other lysosomal disorders that we screen. Um, we have incidentally had uh, 31 fibroids, which to me is the most diagnosed um, lysosomal storage disorder in our panel. We've had three Gaucher, nine MPS1, four infantile onset Pompe disease, and then 24 late onset Pompe disease. Next slide, please. So for ALD, we, we began screening April of 2018. We used a first tier assay, uh, the Neobase 2 kit, looking for C26 lysophosphatidylcholine. We analyzed in positive ion mode, and as you can see on the screen, we have a cutoff of 0 0.46 micromoles per liter. Any infants that flag above this cutoff gets reflexed to uh, second tier testing. We're doing uh, analysis by uh, liquid chromatography coupled with uh, tandem mass spectrometry. And um, we screen the negative ion mode with a cutoff of less than 0 0.23 micromoles per liter. Anyone that flags above this cutoff, we report to follow up. We request a recollection at the same time a piece of the specimen is sent to a reference laboratory for sequencing of the ABCD1 gene. Next slide, please. So here we've screened over 272,000 infants uh, for ALD. There have been 30 presumed positives that we've reported to our follow-up group. Um, at the time when I made this slide, I indicated that there were four patients pending. I have some information, three of those uh, infants have been um, designated to have a pathogenic hemozygous variant. And so that brings up our total to 10, um, 10 little boys um, that will presumably develop uh, ALD. We've uh, found one Zellweger, uh, we've had two female carriers, and then 16 uh, false positives. Next slide, please. So just uh, I want to thank my staff um, for their dedication and hard work. This was during a lab week this year when we were finally able to, to get together and take a nice group picture, but this was one of the, the funnier ones. Um, so that's it for the ALD and uh, Crab, Bay, Crab Bay update from Tennessee. Thank you for listening.